It's World AIDS Day, and it's a day uh, set aside by the world to commemorate uh, those uh, living with the virus. It's an opportunity for people to unite globally in the fight against HIV and AIDS, also to show support for those living with the virus and uh, those who have died from AIDS-related illness. The first ever Global Health Day was marked in 1988 as World AIDS Day. Globally, an estimated 38 million people are believed to be living with the virus. Despite the virus only being identified in 1984, more than 35 million people have died of HIV or AIDS, making it one of the deadliest pandemics in history. The commemoration of World AIDS Day reminds the public and government that HIV has not completely disappeared and there is still a vital need to raise money, increase awareness, fight prejudice and improve education. Joining me now to discuss this is public health physician Dr. Talabi Odwayo for an expert's perspective on World AIDS Day and uh, its significance. Good to have you join me, uh, Mr. Ardwanya. You know, the, looking at what's happening, uh, tell us how it's been like, especially uh, looking at figures of those who have uh, uh, continued to have that tradition of going for voluntary testing. Yeah, so uh, uh, thank you for, for having me. So um, the, the tradition of setting a day apart for uh, a particular disease is to keep on creating awareness to, to ensure that we, we don't rest on our hours to, and then uh, keep the, the fight on. So um, in terms of uh, HIV in Nigeria, so we are looking at so many factors, the predisposing factors, the enablers, and of course, the, the factors that reinforce uh, the success we have recorded and of course, to ensure that we move forward and do more than uh, uh, we, have, we have been doing. In, in terms of testing, uh, uh, the, the testing in Nigeria is still uh, a bit low for what we want to achieve. We, we are aiming for 90% and, and we are still far below 50%. So I think a lot still has to be done about that, especially by looking at the drivers. What, what drives low testing in Nigeria? look at cultural uh, uh, habits, we look at uh, laws that, that would not encourage an, uh, testing, and of course, so, some other factors like that. Now, l l let's look at one major factor, perhaps uh, you, you must have uh, uh, encountered quite a number, and it has to do with, uh, you know, how people treat those living with the virus. Uh, do you think that such stigma or stigmatization uh, also accounts for people, you know, going for voluntary testing? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, um, compared to uh, the initial period, we could say that stigma to an extent has reduced, uh, reduced somewhat, but it's still a major uh, factor. For instance, we want to increase the number of uh, testing centers uh, uh, across the globe, uh, for instance. But people have come to associate testing center with people, I mean, place, uh, places where people with HIV go to, not where people go to to test. So that, that stigma around the disease discourage people, of course, from going to test voluntarily. So the, the, the level of voluntary testing we have is rather low, even compared with the testing we have. So you're right. It, it's a major, major barrier to people accessing testing or going voluntarily to test. Well, you're a public health physician and uh, one other, you know, scourge that the world is battling with at the moment is COVID-19. Do you think that uh, this uh, has taken the, the shine of this awareness uh, as we mark World AIDS Day today? Yes, so uh, COVID-19 is the disease of the day, <laughs> so to speak. So, and when it started and it evolved, 
so far as it has evolved, we've seen that there are many non-COVID related deaths as a result of COVID-19. Because COVID-19 is taking a toll on fund, on personnel, and other resources, you see that there seems to be a form of neglect of other diseases that are not less important. So you could say it's taking the shine of it. One thing that goes for HIV is that there have been commitment forms over the year and uh, the years, and there have been things put in place that would ensure that the, 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 the program continue. You remember that HIV is majorly do not driven. So people are committed and they are trying to work harder to ensure that we don't lose on the on, on the on the on the on the momentum we have already uh, gathered uh, qu quickly before i let you go where are we now now I'm, I'm trying to look at the continent where are we now in terms of health care for those living with hiv and aids on the continent uh, in terms of prevention control as well as treatment yes so uh so so, so saharan africa you know has uh, uh, an unfair share of, 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 of people living with uh, HIV. You know, you look at a continent where uh, uh, the, the, the resources are limited and the disease burden is very high. And then you, you want to match the resources to those who require it to ensure that you get the best for them. So in terms of that, the disease burden is far higher than other parts of the world. For instance, tuberculosis is one of the major drivers of HIV. We know that the co-infection with HIV has made it really uh, difficult to control. Now that we are now having TB resistant uh, strain. So the burden is so, so, so high on Sub-Saharan Africa. And like I said before, our programs are majorly do not driven. So what we need to do is to gain traction starts by owning some of those initiatives, by committing more funds into, uh, I mean, more resources to ensure that our own population are able to access care, have increased awareness, make testing more available. We can explore self-testing, for instance, make testing more available, and then ensure there is access to treatment because it is one thing to test, it is another to ensure that people get the treatment they deserve in order to limit transmission, which might continue if you don't do that. So drugs must be available. We must have diagnostic uh, 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 system in place. And then, of course, treatment to reduce that, that, that uh, prevalence. Well, a fine place for us to leave it there. Many thanks uh, for spending time with me on this, uh, Dr. Odwanyo, uh, public health uh, expert, there looking at uh, what's happening uh, as the world marks uh, the AIDS day.